Amazing. Thank you so much, Jillian. Hi, everyone. I'm Luke Levasseur. I'm a product manager on our AI Cloud products. Um, and I'm really excited to show you what's new with the, with the Einstein Generative AI platform today for devs. To kick things off, I want to touch on a few features at the Einstein One platform model agility layer. To start off with, we've heard your requests for a new set of composable APIs for use in your applications to interface directly with the Einstein Trust layer. This is why we're exposing our models API to you all via Apex and REST in the summer timeframe. Additionally, we've heard you asking to use additional models hosted on different model infrastructures. We're now exposing models hosted on Bedrock and Vertex, such as Anthropic Cloud and Google Gemini in the summer release. And on top of all of that, we know that good AI is powered by strong data. That's why we're enabling you to use Data Cloud's vector database for semantic search on your enterprise unstructured data via Apex and Retrievers in the summer release. So let's take a look at the Models API in action. Navigating to the Apex classes page and setup, I first want to show you where this all lives. The new Models API class and child classes here are what we're going to build on top of for the remainder of this demo. Now let's take a look at the four new endpoints we've exposed. The first is the Create Generations endpoint from the Models API. This endpoint takes a prompt, a set of model parameters, and a model name, and generates a single shot response to that prompt, which you can then compose in Apex or REST use cases in your applications. The embeddings endpoint again takes a model name and a string of text and generates a vector representation of that text for semantic comparison use cases in your apps. Register feedback is your way to provide human-generated feedback for a given LLM response. It takes a chat generation ID, human-generated feedback, as well as a sentiment, and then it stores this via the model API to Data Cloud. The last endpoint, which I'm super excited to introduce, is the chat generations endpoint. This is a conversational endpoint, so it takes actually a history of conversational messages sent between an LLM and a user and provides contextually relevant output from the LLM based on that historical context. Now let's go take a look at what we can do with chat generations in our org. So navigating to our seller home, I can see in the bottom right corner of the utility bar, I now have an AI chat app that I've built with Models API here. So what I've just done is I've pasted in a like, very long meeting transcript to the AI chat app, and I've asked it to summarize the meeting. So while the AI chatbot thinks, or upvotes idea on, on idea exchange, um, shout out idea exchange once again, um, what's happening behind the scenes is we're sending this transcript off to the LLM, and the LLM is generating that summary. So this is great, um, but I really want to know what are the action items. So let's ask our chatbot right here. And you'll notice, what are the action items doesn't mean much without the context of the previous messages, right? This is where that conversational history that's enabled by the chat generations API really comes into play. So here, the chatbot is able to respond with the two action items based on the previous messages from this conversation, enabling you to have these conversational, contextually relevant experiences with your LLMs. Now let's go back to the slides and see what's new in Prompt Builder. So in Prompt Builder, we have a host of new features to introduce to you all following our GA in February. And the first that I want to call out is that we've heard your, your complaints that the error messages that we're surfacing in Prompt Builder aren't the most helpful. So we've improved these error messages, surfacing relevant context to you about why an LLM response may have failed. We're also enabling you to use free text inputs in prompts as grounding resources. This lets your users define at runtime the text that they want to ground their prompts on. Record snapshot grounding automatically grounds your prompts in the most relevant fields from the user's page layout. Large text inputs ensures that those pesky errors related to overflowing a context window for a given model won't bother you anymore. And last but not least, structured outputs ensures that when you request JSON from an LLM, you'll get a response in that format. All right, so let's, let's take a look at a couple of these in Prompt Builder now. So here I am in Prompt Builder, and I'm going to open up the Summarize Open Cases prompt. The first thing I want to show you all here is the model selector in this right-hand panel. 
It's not there quite yet, because this is coming in June, but here you will soon see standard models for Anthropic and Gemini in the June timeframe. Today, we're just working against OpenAI models. In this prompt, we're asking the LLM to role play as a support representative, summarizing a set of open cases for an account. You'll notice also in the prompt, we're asking for a specific format, right? This prompt is asking for paragraph formatted summaries per case. But what if a different support agent wants bullet point formatted summaries? Historically, we may have had to use two different prompt versions or two different prompt templates entirely to reflect those different formatting needs. Now, however, with the ability to provide free text into a prompt as a merge field, we can do this in, run, in real time at runtime. So you'll see here, we've specified the format as a merge field, which we've inserted via this menu in the resource picker. Right? And then we're actually able to specify what we want that format's value to be in Prompt Builder right here. So when we preview this prompt with the format specified of bullet points against the Edge Communications account, we'll see that the response back from the LLM is returned to us in bullet points. And a different user would be able to type in paragraphs or any other format in runtime in their application experiences. So that wraps up my demo for today. 